everybody, welcome back to the channel. And finally, as promised, we're doing the Hemi swap on my son's JK Wrangler. Now, I'm not gonna go over the video of showing the disassembly and removal of anything. Um, I would say it's pretty straightforward, but that's a lie. I, I gotta give credit to Ghostly Rich. He has a video called uh, How to Remove Engine from Jeep Wrangler 3.6 liter. So it's a ghostly rich, I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can check it out. Um, kudos to him, he went over everything you need to do to disconnect everything from the 3.6 and I'll be honest with you, there was stuff I would have never found without watching his video. Um, I'm not real familiar with working on the engine drivetrain in these things as much as I am about the body and the interior and the accessory wise but he went over a lot of things and it, and it really paid i watched it over and over and over and i was even watching it while i was working on the jeep trying to find everything do yourself a favor get yourself a a couple push pin removal tools there's a million push pins on this thing the entire wiring harness is pushed pin to threaded bolt holes on the engine on the core support everywhere and what I had found out because I started disconnecting everything before I started watching that video is I didn't even need to disconnect most of the wiring harness from the sensors and, and uh, accessories on the engine because the harness is coming out with the engine. We got it disconnected from the computer. We got the main harnesses disconnected. One of the other things that he pointed out was in his opinion, and, and I got to believe him after working on this, it's best to pull the engine and the transmission as one. If you are doing the Hemi swap and you have the automatic like we do, you're gonna to have to change the bell housing on the front of the transmission anyway. So I believe just as he said, it's easier to pull it out as one unit. But by saying that, we, I did take off the transfer case. Uh, he, he showed that it's too heavy, it's too rear end heavy with the transfer case on there and the engine wouldn't have come out at, at any type of level angle that his did. We're gonna wheel the Jeep around under the hoist and as we start pulling the engine and the transmission out, we're going to roll the Jeep backward instead of pulling the engine out like you would normally with an engine stand. Uh, my son has bought a, a Jeep Hemi swap kit. Uh, it's from a company called Dakota Customs, it was, it's, um, it's customizable. You call them, tell them what you're doing, tell them what transmission you have, tell them what any other things that you're gonna do. It's, it's almost 10 grand, um, but you think that's a lot of money just to do a Hemi swap and you still don't have the engine. Yeah, it is. Um, this isn't about doing it cheap, because once this thing goes together, I don't ever want to take it apart again. We don't want to have any problems. We're ordering a brand new Crate 392 Hemi. We're getting the swap kit. It comes with radiator, fans, new air conditioning lines because you have to reroute them, new power steering lines, you have to reroute them. It comes with a full exhaust if you want it. Uh, we're also going to put in an auxiliary fuel tank because the Hemi gets shit for mileage. Um, and we want that auxiliary fuel tank, so we're not going to use the exhaust, but we were able to have him send the headers. They're, they're like shorty headers so that everything fits in here. We're going to have to customize something as far as exhaust to get it in and around the fuel, the, the factory fuel cell and then the auxiliary fuel cell. Uh, and by doing that, we're going to have to remount the evap can, the, do the high mount evap canister, which we, we should have done a long time ago, but we never did. So these are all the things that you need to take into consideration if you're doing this, if you want to make it easy. Um, I had to go out and buy a, a floor mount, low profile transmission jack. It lifts 23 inches high. I was able to slide it under the transfer case, chain it down. After I got the bolts out, it slipped right out. I just left it chained up to the, to the jack and it's going to sit there until we're ready to put it in. But the swap kit comes with an engine harness for the Hemi. Uh, you take out your Jeep computer and you send it into them. One of the other things that 
my son mentioned to me when he was talking to the people at Dakota Customs was, we have that uh, uh, cow, I forget the name of it, it's a, I'll, I'll put a picture of it on the screen, it's a, it's a green controller, cow something controller, whatever, but it's useless now. But one of the things they said at Dakota Customs was, you have to reset your ECM back to factory specs with that controller so the Jeep thinks it's back to stock and because if you don't, they're going to have problems programming it with the Hemi and you're going to have programs when you, problems when you get it back. So if you use that controller, make sure you set everything back to factory specs before you get everything tore apart on the harness like I have now and then you realize, yeah, I forgot to do that. So that's really important too. As you can see from the video, that wasn't too difficult. Uh, I was by myself. It kind of sucked doing it like that, but that's what I had to use to do this with. Uh, the Jeep is extremely heavy with no engine or interior transmission trying to push it back. It was difficult at best, but I got it out. As you can see, the transfer case is off, and it, it was the perfect angle. When it came out, I have the... Uh, uh, ratchet strap assembly that was holding the trans out and as I was pulling the Jeep back and the engine stayed there it came off the strap and it uh, it held that angle it, it didn't hit the ground or anything the Jeep's obviously too high but it was a, a great angle uh, as you can see my leveler isn't even in line with the engine it's side to side and it, it came out just fine so swap kit comes with the new bell housing for the Mercedes five-speed or Chrysler five-speed, whatever you want to call it, that fits the Hemi. So the, that kit also comes with pretty detailed directions. I actually went on their website and downloaded it. I've been looking at it for, I don't know, well over a year now. This has been in, this, this has been in planning for many years. That's where we're at. Um, please subscribe. If you want to see more, just keep watching, and uh, we'll film this as we go along.